This program is sponsored in part by the South Bend Education Foundation. Coming up on Sports Zone, the school year may be coming to a close, but the SBCSC football is already heating up for the fall season. Clay High School was athletically a, a powerhouse for many, many years. What does the future hold for Clay athletes? With the closing of the school, we'll have some answers. We'll also take a look at behind the scenes of the South Bend Cubs. All this and more coming up on Sports Zone. Welcome to Sports Zone. South Bend Community Schools take on all the things sports. I'm Efren Gallegos from John Adams High School. And I'm Shamar Jackson from Riley High School. Let's take a look at some of the spring sports going around South Bend. Riley boys and Adams girls took home trophies at the city's meet this week. Did you also see Robert Naboo's outstanding performance? Yeah, I heard he was pretty, like, pretty good at, at what he does, you know? Yeah, he took all the trophies in sprint sports. Female athlete uh, Angel Thomas, she uh, broke the record for the 100 and 200 meter dash, you know? Oh. I, you know, I, I don't really know her, but I see her around school, and she seems like a pretty extraordinary athlete. Yeah, another uh, outstanding female athlete is uh, Adriana Swanson at uh, Washington High School. Just broke the NIC 100-meter hurdle record with a 14.76. Kind of uh, crazy to be doing yeah. that as a freshman. Really, you know, there's so much room to grow still, you know. I can just only imagine how far she's going to get by the time her senior year comes. Yeah, and, you know, speaking of, uh, like, an athlete spotlight, you know, we have an athlete here, uh, senior uh, Austin Whitrock. Yep. I heard he's pretty good at what he does as well, you know. We also have a story on that coming up later by uh, Aubrey Millard. Yeah. On the topic of baseball, Adams baseball is, you know, they've been great over like the past years. You Don't know? they have a winning season this year? Uh, they're, they're, they're like 10 and 5, so it's, it's not too bad. Pretty good. Then they win uh, sectionals a few years back? Yeah, I think it was uh, 2022. They beat Laporte like 5-2. Yeah. And, um, you know, Adams softball just got a new coach. How do you like do you know anything about that? Um, yeah, I've seen that they're 12-4, uh, and four, so it looks like, you know what I'm saying, the new change is pretty yeah, good. I, I've really never heard too much about the softball team, but, you know, I guess we're pretty good, you know? Yeah, they seem pretty unstoppable at home. Got a 6-2 and two record. Wow. And, uh, you know, Washington has been getting a lot of recognition this year and, well, a little bit over the years, but mostly this year. The girls' basketball team was just uh, ranked 12 by ESPN in the country. Yeah, did you get to see any of the games this season? I, I have been to some of the games, take some pictures for them, and, you know, it, it was pretty, like, you know, pretty, like, up there, you know, a lot of uh, attention in the area. Yeah, it was an outstanding team to watch, you know what I'm saying? The coach, the way he just keeps the team together and their offense they run is pretty good, pretty unstoppable. Yeah, and uh, also, like, three of the girls made the All-State team, which is pretty impressive as well. Rashonda Jones, Amaya Reynolds, and Kira Reynolds. You know, that's pretty impressive for uh, an underclassman for Kira Reynolds, you know. Props to her, like I said, like, we were talking about um, Adriana Swanson, you know, there's still so much potential and a lot of room to grow. Um, I've seen that she's been doing pretty extraordinary herself as well, you know. She has to, you know, she, it's a lot of pressure on her. She has to live up to, you know, her sisters, but I, I think she got it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Kira Reynolds, her freshman year, led uh, Indiana in blocks. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that as well, too. And I think also rebounds as well. So it was pretty, pretty amazing to see such young people do, you know, do be good at what they do, you know? Yeah, she definitely has a lot of room to become that guy at uh, Washington High yeah. School. Turning now to football, school may be winding down with summer break just weeks away, but Riley and Adams football teams are already ramping up for the fall. Justin McDonald and Shamar caught up with a few coaches and players to see what their plans are for the upcoming season. What do you feel about the rivalry between Adams and Riley? They got us past three years, but that's just different. We got a whole new coaching staff, much better players, been together, got some team chemistry going. So I'm not really worried about Adams, no. It can be a good rivalry sometimes, but you know, when people come to play, they come to play. People's feelings be out on the field. Uh, it, it, it can be decent sometimes, you know. I mean, hey, I think we better, but it, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's going to be a winning, winning culture. Uh, they're going to start something uh, new at this school. Uh, I think we have the potential to be really good next season. Uh, we've got 25 seniors that are uh, returning, and we return just about every starter, uh, 18 of 22 starters. 
I think we grew a lot as the season went on and um, kids kind of know what our expectation and the standards are this year. So there won't be any um, kind of needing to get used to or adjusting to the coaching because we, uh, we had a full year to kind of really understand and put our stamp on the program. And uh, I think our guys are excited and know that we're reaching for higher goals and higher expectations. If you're a good leader, you're never satisfied with where you are. And so I think we've got some people that, that have a lot of, of room to grow and become better leaders and uh, really excited to see that development over the summer. Bro, it don't even matter how the coaches do. Well, it matters, but it don't matter. It matters how you play and how the team plays. If you don't got good teamwork and good teammates, then Ain't nothing finna act right. You gotta know your teammates and know your players before you even learn how to coach anybody. So the coaching thing could be out the window for real. But that's something that's uh, pretty cool about Adams is that our schedule offers us no easy weeks. Um, we schedule tough out of conference games. Riley's a really good team. Uh, so are Culver and, and Logansport. And then uh, when we get into the conference schedule, I mean, all of those teams are really good too. So. What do you feel about the rivalry between Adams and Riley? Um, I think it's a re really nice game to have. I don't think uh, I don't think it's a rivalry in the traditional way because um, neither of us are in the same conference. We're not in the same sectional, but it's a good opportunity for both teams to, to get better. And I think you know, in an ideal world, uh, Adams and Riley are both able to celebrate sectional championships together. You know, every other game, I wish them the best of luck. You know, hope they have success. But against us, you know, we're trying to drive them into the ground. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to playing them again this year. Smart, what do you think about like what you just saw like with the interviews and all the, the players and the coaches? Uh, man, the environment that the coaches are bringing this year just feels a lot different. Um, I'm kind of sad I don't get to be a part of that, yeah. but I'm still playing my role, you know what I'm saying, helping out with the coaches. But it just seems like next year Riley's going to be yeah. unstoppable. Yeah, and that's right. You were a former player for Riley for how long? Uh, just one year. Just one year. And how did your season go? Like, um, Coach Lee came in as his first year, and we went positive. Uh, best record we had in a few years. So, you know what I'm saying? He's making a, change, he's making a change on the west side. Yeah. And obviously, like, how do you think you played against Adams, you know? Like, um, Adams wasn't our best game. We could have played better. But I think next year, Riley would definitely yeah, take the win. And, um, you know, Adams uh, came out with the win uh, uh, last minute. You know, it was pretty intense because I was there at that game as well. And, it, you know, it was pretty, like, it was a pretty outstanding catch by uh, Adrian and Patty, so. Yeah, it came down to double overtime. It was a, it was a long game, man. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, win some, you lose some. It was, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's you know, Riley and Adams are like five minutes away, so it's just like a, it's a pretty big like rivalry. So yeah, definitely. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding the closing of Clay High School in the fall of 2024. Not surprisingly, that leaves the school athletes with a lot of questions and concerns. I know. I mean. When we found out, you know, about the vote and everything, I mean, we just took it as if, like, you know, just go out with a bang. So, you know, we're just trying to make it as fun as we can. I just want most of you to understand that, that Clay High School was athletically a, a powerhouse for many, many years. Uh, state title in basketball, um, state finals in soccer. Uh, Clay High School used to be actually probably athletically one of the best schools in northern Indiana. I've been here for three years. My um... Basically, my whole family went here, and it's closing. And I just been—it's my third year here playing basketball. So, a lot of talent comes from uh, Clay, and I'm—I'm I'm glad I didn't go to any other uh, school, because uh, I don't think I would have got as good as I am if I didn't come here. Um, yeah, I learned a lot, like a heck of a lot, coming here. No, I'll probably just speak up for the freshmen and the younger classmen because they showed a lot of school support and they their love for Clay and now it's just going to shut down so they got to switch. That's a really difficult process for a lot of our kids and where they're going to end up. Um, I am getting a lot of words that uh, a lot of kids are going to stay here at Clay High School, finish their, their career here one more year. Um, if they're younger, then they may stay here one more year. Yeah, uh, a lot of them are actually planning to leave this year, is what I'm, from what I hear. And uh, yeah, so some of them are staying, but I mean, they'll still have to switch eventually. And then it'll just be a whole new experience for them. So I think it'll just kind of throw them off a little bit. A lot of kids that they want to stay, and then a lot of parents, you know, they don't want to make it a big, mis you know, a big deal where next year after their school they have to pick somewhere. So a lot of them are leaving early, but a lot of them are staying. So it's really like a 50-50 split. 
trying to plan how this is going to take place. Uh, where kids are going to be able to maybe get in small groups and talk to kids at Riley and talk to kids at Washington to find out where they want to go and how they want to pursue that. You know, really they haven't had the numbers ever since I've been here. You know, we only had like, you know, 20, 19 kids like that. You know what I mean? So it's really been a drought, you know, with, you know, numbers on the roster and everything. But the people that we do have, it's like a family. So, you know what I mean? Like, I love them very dearly. You know what I mean? And I, my coaching staff as well, too. If you spend some time here, you'll see, like, it's actually a great school. One more year blowout at Clay High School. Um, we're going to try to have all kinds of uh, uh, alumni uh, gatherings for them. We're going to have parties for them. We're taking them to a Cubs game. Um, we're going to celebrate Clay for one more year. Yeah, we were talking with some other classmen, and you know what I'm saying? A lot of them are have a split decision on if they should stay or leave. How, what would you do in that situation? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm with them. You know, it's a pretty tough decision. You know, it's, it's not an easy thing to do because, you know, First of all, what, you know, your parents, they, they probably live in that school zone, school district, you know, they wouldn't want to make a drive or, you know, get a bus for this or that, you know. But also for their, their sports, you know, or their friends, you know, a lot of them are going to get split. But I, I would say I'll, I'll take a new beginning and a new journey and move to a different school, you know. It's always good to start fresh. Yeah, it can be pretty hard, you know what I'm saying, leaving your teammates and old coaches and even faculty members that, you know what I'm saying, you yeah. got to bond with. But me personally, I think I would go ahead and take that switch too, you yeah. know what I'm saying, move on to better things. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying Clay is a bad school or at all. Like, you know, they have their own unique style. You know, they, they are a school of, the, of drama and everything like that. But, you know, like a, a, new, a new fresh beginning is always the best way to start. Boys Volleyball, Notre Dame Football, and Behind the Scenes Look at the South Bank Cup are all coming up after this break. What's been going on with you? What do you mean? You've been missing shots all day. You don't understand. While there have been rumblings of boys volleyball starting at South Bend, nothing has been set in stone. But did you guys know back in the 70s there was boys volleyball team in South Bend? Sort of. At least for a little while. It all started with Title IX, which was a, and is a federal law to protect people from discrimination based on gender and education programs and activities that receive federal finance assistance. It was originally intended to give girls and women equal treatment in education and sports. But in 1975, Clay High School volleyball coach Joan Mitchell used the law in reverse to allow two boys to play on the girls' volleyball team. The boys Brian Gorlarski and Ed Durst towered over the girls' nets giving them an advantage, then they made it to state finals, but they were beat in Muncie Northside. Coach Debbie Milburn from Northside credits telling her girls that the boys were ne weren't very good with helping Muncie win. In reality, Milburn wrote in her new book, Meeting Her Match, that the boys were extremely talented, the best she'd ever seen. Title IX was changed the following year to prevent boys from playing on girls' teams. Man, what a story, man. Like. That's really, really like crazy. Like, there's a lot of perspectives to it. Like, you know, a lot of angles to it, man. Like, you can only imagine how the kids felt. You know, it's, it's not really just about the, the game. It's a, you know, about their feelings as well for like, the boys that, you know, they were being booed like by a whole state, like a whole gym, when they were just trying to play. And then the girls, you know, there was a lot of pressure for them. Like, yeah. How would you feel like if you were in their shoes, like, like, on both sides, you know? Yeah. Um, being a guy in that situation, also, it has to be tough because you also have to know that, you know what I'm saying, what you're doing isn't the fairest, but you just try to win, play your sport. So yeah. uh, playing an entire game, getting bullied the whole time, it has to, be, has to be pretty tough. I can't really say what I would do. Uh, that's a hard one, man. Yeah. And then for the girls, you know what I'm saying, they're just trying to play their sport. Yeah, that, props to them, yeah. Props yeah, the way them. they had to train was crazy. Like the coach had them training against guys, you know what I'm saying, yeah. she would lie to them, tell them that the guys yeah. were better than the ones they were going to play. Yeah. And, that was, it wasn't true. The guys that were playing were outstanding yeah. athletes. Amazing. And uh, so in their shoes, I can't even say like yeah. how I would feel, yeah. what I would do. Just think about it. It was like, you know, they're working their bodies to like their physical limits and, you know, also their mind, you know, it's just all over the place, you know, because yeah. the girls, I know the girls really wanted it. Like they wanted to, it's, a, it's something they do for like a hobby and it's something they enjoy and, you know, like being overtook by a certain law, you know, it's just, 
it doesn't feel too right, you know, and it just it will be a cause a lot of mental strength. Yeah, we still have Title Nine used to this day. Thank God that they switched it up, but yeah, yeah we still use it. Well, yeah, and it's obviously like you know, it's good that girls can you know also like they can express if they want to play football or rugby or lacrosse or whatever yeah. you know, and it's good that we can make it fair enough for them. Yeah, he's a baseball standout, second team All Conference, and Riley Furbringer, who also runs track. And we're talking about senior Austin Britrock, of course. Arby Millar brings us a student profile. I signed to go play baseball at Olivet College. Uh, I've been playing baseball for 14 years now. Started at the Y and then went to Southeast Little League and then I started playing trauma ball and I played for a couple different organizations and now I play for uh, Riley. I enjoy playing uh, with a lot of my friends. A lot of my friends on the team. That's fun getting to go out there and play. Two words that probably don't go together a lot is independent and versatile. He's, he's a very versatile young man who, who competes in everything, has a lot of wisdom and determination in what he, what he competes in. And um, just a great kid, uh, come from a great family. He, he moves around with a lot of security about himself, nothing in with what, he, what he's trying to do or what he's trying to accomplish in life at a young age. Earlier, we discussed how high school teams are getting ready for the upcoming football season. But they're not the only ones gearing up for the fall. Jude Freeman has the latest news from the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Coming into 2023, not only does Notre Dame have one of the top 15 recruit classes, but they also have a solid group of transfers coming in from other schools. Let's take a look at them now. Coming out of Ohio State, ESPN ranked Javante Jean Baptiste as an overall four star defensive end transfer. When asked about attending Notre Dame, he said the connection to the coaches and the on field opportunities is what attracted him to Notre Dame. Javante Jean Baptiste, who had the rough in the passer penalty, one of the few who brought him down. Thomas Harper, safety from Oklahoma State. At 5'11, 108 pounds, he's ranked as a three star transfer by the NCAA. Can he get off the field here? Play clock at four. Williams steps up against pressure and tries to escape. Lost the football. A scramble for it. And the Cowboys have it. The first takeaway of the night for Oklahoma State. Coming out of Virginia Tech at 6'2", 222, Caleb Smith recorded 37 catches for 674 yards, three touchdowns, and an 18-yard average. Second and 10 for Grant Wells and the Hokies. Plenty of time for Wells. Going to take a shot deep. Has a receiver. Caught. Touchdown, Hokies. And finally, out of Wake Forest is Sam Hartman at 6'1", 210 pounds. Hartman threw for over 3,500 yards, 38 total touchdowns, and a completion percentage of 63%. Hold for you. On first and 10, Hartman to throw, has all day, stands in the pocket. Flag comes out, pass is caught around the 20-yard line by Jamal. Sam Hartman and company back on the field for Wake Forest. He's trying to go up top. Going down the middle, has a man pass, is caught there. A.T. Perry breaks a tackle, touchdown, Wake Forest. A South Bend tradition will continue this summer with the Cubs Teacher Appreciation Night will be held at the Four Winds Field on Wednesday, June 7th. The club has partnered with Jordan Automotive to give 250 tickets away to area teachers and administrators. The game against the Lansing Lugnuts starts at 7.05 p.m. with the fireworks after. The defending Midwest champions have started the first half of the year season strong and remain in a tie for second place in the West Division. Senior Rafael Tortolero recently visited the Four Winds Stadium and has this report on what goes on behind the scenes of the famous club. While the players often steal the spotlight, there is an entire group who works hard behind the scenes, largely unnoticed. Thanks to the South Bend Cubs media team, we were given a glimpse into their world. Most people, when they come to a game, they have a lot of fun and 
Um, they, they're enjoying the game. They may not necessarily be watching the baseball action, but they're in the fun zone or the splash pad or grabbing food. Uh, and they're having a great time, but they don't know how much work goes in behind the scenes. A lot of my roles are editing things. So we like today we have, we're on Marquee Sports Network. Um, we did pregame, so I will edit that. I will take things from replay and then um, edit that into what Max did, our broadcaster, um, and then put some flavor. To ensure a successful game day, the media team collaborates with multiple departments. Considering all the departments we manage, marketing, uh, media relations, video production, social media, uh, and we work with a variety of departments here at the stadium, the box office with tickets, you know, food and beverage, stadium operations, there's just, we pretty much interact with everybody and so the no one day is the exact same based off the other days. As a member of this team, you must be flexible and willing to wear many hats. Uh, officially, I'm the assistant general manager for marketing and media, but I like to say I do everything. I could be running around changing flyers. I could be running around um, setting up cameras. Because of what I do, you know, I don't have a degree in everything. Mm -hmm. A lot of everything that I learned came from um, just doing it and experience. The work is rewarding, but it's not always glamorous. There are days that it's tough, I'll tell you. There's days that you're, you're here in the you know 15th hour of your day and you're in the middle of a 12 game home stand and just like I am exhausted. If you're interested in pursuing a career in sports production, Chris has some good advice. I started my career in sports in 2007 while I was still in college and I loved it. I fell in love with it. And as I kept you know going from team to team, various uh, organizations, uh, it was just picking up new things, new experiences. Um, hey, can you do this? Do you mind doing this? I would like to tell people that want to get into sports, always be willing to jump in. So the next time you're at a game, just remember the amount of people that took to make it happen. For its Sports Zone, I'm Rafael Tortolero. He was a Riley High School basketball player before playing for Notre Dame and going on to a professional career with the San Antonio Spurs. But we know him best as our former member of our Sports Zone team. We're talking, of course, about Blake Wesley. Wesley entered the Spurs after just one year at Notre Dame. He wasn't expected to have a breakout year, but did use the, his time greatly improved under the training of one of the NBA's greatest talent developers, Greg Popovich. Even though Wesley played only 37 games this season, he did get better. The guard closed the year with a two back-to-back double-digit point performances for a strong finish. Yeah, man, Blake had a up and down a year, man. They had put him down in the G League for a little while. He came back to the first team, and you know what I'm saying? He really started performing, and he had a crazy dunk against uh, uh, Boston. Oh, man. Uh, even in the G League, man, I feel like he still performed very well. Like, he did pretty good for a rookie, man. And, you know, I've seen some, some pretty things that, like, you know, takes a lot of chess to do. You know, I've seen that he, he did a little uh, own pass off of Luka Donage's back. And, then, you know, <laughs> that was, you know, he's, Luka Donage is a, a vet, man. Yeah. And he, as a rookie, you wouldn't expect somebody to do that to him, you know. Yeah. So it was just pretty amazing, you know, seeing somebody from South Bend getting out of this and, then, you know, doing something big for themselves, doing something big for our city is, is pretty inspiring. Yeah, he's definitely been putting on for the Spurs. The Spurs isn't the best team in the league, but he's definitely, you know what I'm saying, yeah, brought a little flair to yeah. them. No, definitely, you know, like I said, it's, it's very inspiring. You know, I see that he's getting these brand deals and seeing that he's doing extremely well. And, you know, it's it, it make, it's making everybody proud, even our uh, our principal here, Mr. Henderson, you know, he came down, uh, Blake Wesley came down for a little bit, like I think a week ago or two, and, yeah. you know, it was all smiles and, you know, laughs. Yeah. Um, I knew Blake kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I played my freshman year with him. If you met the guy, you would think he's a bit cocky, but he's actually a really, you know what I'm saying, down-to-earth, cool guy. Yeah. Pretty genuine, you know what I'm saying? Great Definitely. vibes. It's good to have a lot of confidence. If you if you work hard enough for what you do and you what you're striving for, you know, it's really inspiring and, you know, it can help you a lot. That about wraps it up for us. Thanks for joining us on Sports Zone. Be sure to check us out online at sbstvradio.org. I'm Efren Gallegos. Don't forget to follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm Shamar Jackson. Have a great weekend.